and welcome to the Paranormal Side Show. I'm your host, John Edwards, and joined as always by my lovely wife, Stacey. Hello. And we, well, we are headed into June, baby. Yep. I can't believe it. It's, it's this year's gone by really quickly. I mean, really. Yeah. It's, it's going by too quick. Mm-hmm. It's funny how that works when you get older. I know. Like, I remember being a kid and thinking it was crazy that my mother started Christmas shopping at Thanksgiving. Yeah. It's like, why would you start shopping this early? It's so long till Christmas. Yeah, I mean, that's that seems like forever when you're a kid. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, I mean, you still got school left, mm-hmm. you know? for when, does, when do kids get out for school these days? Is it I... like the second, third week in December? It's probably not all the way up till... No, I think it's all the way up till, and they maybe they get a week off or something. I don't really know. They get off for a winter solstice. <laughs> I don't think so. They should. They should. That's that's wrong if they don't. Yes. I was surely they get off by then. Well, this is why we homeschool. Yes. So we can be off when we want. W- whenever we want. <laughs> We're a little bit off at all times. I think so. Mostly off mm-hmm. most of the time. Right. But hey, I was thinking about something. Okay. Which is always kind of cool, right? Mm-hmm. When we have thoughts and yes. patterns. And, and we talk about them. And we talk about them. <laughs> that happens occasionally. Well, I was thinking about, because somebody shared a picture the other day online on the interwebs. Mm-hmm. And it was of a glamorous little place. Okay. The Cott County War Memorial. Oh, I think I've heard of that place. Once or Sounds twice. Sounds familiar. Yeah, once or twice mm. we've heard of that place, right? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so somebody shared a picture on the interwebs and... It was really got me thinking. And then somebody else got on there and they were like, hey, I love that, blah, blah, blah. You know, and then there's always the guy that, that lived down the street. I know you're listening right now. <laughs> All of you that were on this particular post are listening right now. And I love you and thank you all. For, for listening. For, yeah, for <laughs> listening. And for those of you still participating in the Facebook area of the Paranormal Sideshow <laughs> fandom. I see all of you who currently do not go to our Facebook, which you need to. I don't push it much anymore. You know what? Starting next episode, I'm going to do the old school pushing. Right. I quit pushing because I was scaring one poor lady. And she kept sending me emails each and every week. She was like, John Edwards, every week when you go over your shilling, it terrifies me. I wear headphones. I'm laying in bed. And I'm like, yeah, that's how you listen to You're me. You're doing isn't it? this soothing talking yeah. and got the voice going on. And then on. I'm just carnival barker. <laughs> just completely PT barn them out of nowhere. I thought we uh, addressed that once. You do that for the people that travel and drive, truck drivers that listen to us. You want to make sure they're yes. awake and on their toes. It's a public service. I did that specifically for my friend on the Audubon. <laughs> <laughs> driving a big truck. That's right. Just to try to keep other people alive. There you go. Because, you know, there's no speed limit there. Mm-hmm. No speed limit out there on Audubon. It's like there in Tahiti where the <laughs> women don't have to wear no tops. <laughs> anyway, War Memorial, what were we saying? What movie was that? Buddy Buddy? No, that was the... That, that was, was the, Buddy Buddy. Was it? Is that Walter, Ma- Walter Matthau? It's Walter Matthau. So it's one of the... Somebody like that, yeah. Yeah. And, and I remember because it was one of those... It was the first time I saw boobies in oh. a theater. Oh, I see. At I the see. very end of it, they're sitting on that island. It's funny because I don't remember anything about that movie except for that line. Do you remember the boobies? No, I just remember him saying that he wanted to go to Tahiti where the woman don't wear no tops. I remember or the whatever boobs. Whatever I remember was. the boobs very well. Well, you know. I was with my entire family. <laughs> the, Even your grandmother? Yeah, the entire extended <laughs> family. And there's boobs. No, you know what? The only time that that really got weird with my grandmother Mm -hmm. uh, was two movies, actually. I remember going to see a Steve Martin film. Mm -hmm. It was like Steve Martin and Lily Tomlin. And it was called All of Me. Yes, I loved that movie. So so good. So they did the body swap thing, right? The old gimmick, like. Right. Well, I thought that he had her, like he he was possessed or something. It was half and half. Dude. what it was? I haven't seen it since I was in the theater that night. Oh. I don't exactly remember. It's so old, Mm -hmm. and this will mean nothing to (laughs) 99.9% of the people we're listening right now. Right. But it was so old, it was at that theater that was on the parkway where the auto zone ended up being. Right. Do you remember there being a movie theater there? No, because I didn't live there when I was that young. (laughs) That was a movie theater. That's crazy. That's where I went to go see a lot of movies. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, I do remember all of me, though. I remember liking it. Yeah. Well, I... 
I don't remember liking it at all. I remember my parents going off on the theater manager because mm-hmm. of how horribly bad it was, like the stuff they <laughs> talked about. Right. For a PG movie. Oh, I see. And I remember, as though it was the theater man's yeah, fault. Well, like I, I wasn't embarrassed at all. Like I didn't know it was over my head. Whatever the themes were, I was just bored into tears because it was a Steve Martin and Lily Tomlin film, right? And right. I was a kid, right? right? Sort of like when we watched Grease as a kid, we didn't really know what they were saying. No, 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 no. I had no idea. Straight I, over your head. The only thing I cared about in Grease was the love and the and the singing. Yeah, I like the singing and the badasses with the leather jackets, you know, and <laughs> right. And um, that stuff was cool to me. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I thought that one song was about cars. Mm-hmm, me too. And I like cars, mm-hmm. so that was really cool. The other time that happened to me in the theater was a movie with Sylvester Stallone. Very out of all the Stallone films, very B movie. Okay. My best friend Travis and I. It was a weekday, and we talked to my grandmother into taking us to see this film. Right. Uh, well, we talked her into buying us the tickets. Little did we know. Right that she would decide to get popcorn and want to sit down and watch a film as well. (laughs) Because little John had no idea that his grandmother might find Sylvester Stallone attractive. Right, right. It was completely over my head. So we went to go see the film Cobra. So Cobra was a little bit harsher than, I believe it was the cussing or something. It It was bad through the whole thing, you know, and... So those are the two examples. Well, I actually remember that movie. Yeah, well, you're not missing anything. But I can tell you something I do remember. What's that? I've got a little story for you. Okay. Give me some music. Not that much music. <laughs> Give me some ambiance, some atmospheric conditions, if you will. If you will. The year was 2004. I was working in a job that required quite a lot of stress and violence on a daily basis. I had a newer co-worker who had been bitten by the paranormal bug. That bug that was caused from the first season of Ghost Hunters. That was taking the world by storm back in 2004. I remember it clearly as Jay and company were training the world on EVPs, EMF, and how to make a local paranormal team that was an acronym and god was there a ton good lord everywhere and you know it didn't take me long to have somebody ask to go with me with one of those teams it was a fun time because of how much enthusiasm was out there for the research for the field just a few years prior to this stace and i well we tried our best We tried our asses off to find a good team near us. It was after a few years of us enduring some incredibly intense hauntings that were still haunting our memories daily. In fact, we tried our best by this point to not think about the paranormal. We uh, doused it with alcohol and copious amounts of things that weren't legal at the time, but probably are now. Still didn't do much to... uh, make us not think about it that those moments we were alone when friends weren't around when the kids weren't making noise we still had those moments where we had to think about it and it was still happening too it wasn't just the knocks in the night for us it wasn't just kitchen you know people walking around and chairs moving and weird time prompt phenomena and things like that We were the Baskin Robbins of flavors of weird. Be it full bodies, disembodied, physical manipulations, little people, lost time, scoop marks, and just some strange ass times. So by 2004, the paranormal wasn't something I was looking to even get into. Not like that because it was into us. We had found a team in Knoxville, which at the time was a couple hours away from us. But this this was the last time we'd even heard of anything like this until Ghost Hunter started. And then, you know, as I said, the onslaught of teams was everywhere. It only took a few months for one of them to find their way to me. And that takes me back to my friend from work. And we'll call him Jim. Just about everyone I'd meet from a, quote, para team 
felt like they had probably been meeting for their weekly game of Magic the Gathering just before deciding to start chasing ghosts. Not that there's anything wrong with that. My extracurriculars back then was being a pro wrestler and a lead singer of a local metal band aptly named Dead Level. Yeah, we thought we were pretty cool. Stacy did a few things too, you know, like managing a bank, things like that. Nothing cool. I take that back. She dated this dude in a band. Well, she was married to one. She just told people she was dating him. That's a joke. <laughs> so back to my coworker, Jim, again. Good old Jim. He was supposed to be traveling down to one of my old stomping grounds. Place that I had a store at. Well, I ran a store in the late 90s. It was a place called Newport, Tennessee. I ran a rent-to-own store in Newport, Tennessee. Think about that. If you know anything about Newport, Tennessee, let me tell you, the last thing you want to run there is a rent-to-own store. Because in Newport, Tennessee, I quickly found out that when they rent it, they believe that $10 means they own it. Or even that first week free. As soon as it got to their house, baby, it was theirs. It was a fun place to work. And Newport is a city in the larger county of Cock. Yeah, I know. Good old Cock County, Tennessee. So in my world, it was famous for a few things. It was famous for a Punch and Judy concert. Rest in peace, Jeff. That was my friend's band. There was a concert there a couple of years before I ran a store there. And I'll, I'll, I remember this big fight breaking out for no reason. Everybody was having a great time. That's probably why. And it was uh, one infamous line that was yelled out. Newport style bitches. <laughs> and I remember us laughing all the way back in the van. Everyone was laughing about the Newport style bitches. Is that why you guys yelled that all the time? All the time. <laughs> all the time. I get it now. It was a big amphitheater. Mm. And uh, that was what was yelled. I also remember Cocaine Nate, this kid that worked for me, asked me if I was cool. That's when I found out what that meant. As he proceeded to lay out some stuff in front of me. When he was trying to explain to me that he really did take those payments from the people and they're, you know, he don't know what happened to him. It's also famous for people saying the Evil Dead was filmed somewhere in one of the mountains. Well, I've heard that from working there and working in Asheville. It's somewhere in between that original cabin, somewhere in between. But one of my drivers at this particular place actually took me to the place somewhere like around del rio if i remember correctly yeah that's another place down there one of the places you don't want to be i remember brenda's by the river it was famous for that that's a whorehouse folks <laughs> a house of ill repute and there's no other way to put it ladies of the night well you want them to be of the night you don't go by there during the day with your eyes open not your flowers of the spring if you know what i'm saying <laughs> You could usually find the place with all the cop cars, and they weren't raiding the place. He's famous for moonshine. Anybody ever hear of Popcorn Sutton? Well, you'll hear about him if you go to Newport back in the day. That was about it, though. Paranormal? Well, it was, it was paranormal. But not for these reasons. So when I found out where the building was, I knew I had passed it countless times but not really paid much attention to it. I mean, when I get out of work, I was, at the time, I was working an hour and a half away. So I was all about getting back to the house. It was pretty much a miserable place, but I did meet some decent people from there. And when I found out Jim had an investigation at Cock County, it was the Cock County Memorial. Never forget it, man. The Cock County Memorial Building. They had done a lot of things there. Things that you wouldn't associate with hauntings like youth basketball. and Well, that's about the only thing I've heard about being done there that was other than, you know, the Masons back years and years and years ago and 
such things like that. But it was closed off for the most part. They said it was, you know, not safe or whatever. It always seemed pretty safe to me, except for the demonic presence or whatever. He asked if I'd like to go with, and I figured, what the hell? I'll see the thing. And, you know, see what people are talking about. Because quite a few of them were already getting stories. People, I think, it had broken in. This was a legitimate investigation, though, that was approved. So there I was, 2004, flashlight, tape recorder, the good old days. And there was people that had better equipment, other equipment. There was actually old school EMFs and such things that we had. Lots of night vision cameras. And some real weird shit. (laughs) Because what happened to me that night, if I hadn't already had... An abundance of hauntings happened in my place. This was the first time that I went somewhere on purpose. You know, other than when you're a teenager and you break into the happy birthday house, stuff like that. This was, this was the first time that me and people I didn't know decided to willfully go into a den of evil. If you ever pulled up to a place and you feel like even the bricks of the place know who you are, you feel like the foundation is somehow a unison with your soul, that you know the building and the building knows you for no reason you can't even explain it. You just feel like you know this place. And more than that, you feel like it, something ominous. That's the word. There's something ominous about it. Not for everyone, but for you. That's how I felt the first time that we pulled up. When I looked at it. And sure, it's like the first fight you get into. Your knees get a little weak. It's not fear, it's adrenaline. First time you make love. There's a certain feeling that you have. Same thing with a paranormal investigation. When you go into it, there's going to be a feeling you have on the outside of the building before you go in. I mean, if it's a real building, man. And you've heard some of them stories already. And you're going in there and you're going to be in there all night. And you know that. You're stepping into the unknown. Especially before it was on 57 channels every day. You're stepping into something that you've personally experienced. We had already been haunted. We already knew what that felt like. We knew what it felt like to hold each other in the bed. In the middle of the night while you're hearing somebody walk around. And you know it's not a human. But neither one of you want to get up and go do anything about it. Because what are you going to do? They got the upper hand. You know about it because you've already seen a full bodied apparition, solid shadow figure, whatever you want to call it. And you know that you saw it because unfortunately she saw it too. In a different room. You've already lived that. You've already had something you can't explain run by your feet. For weeks thinking it's a cat but the cat's been gone for a while and then when you guys figure that out well you look it up and you kind of figure out what you got so you know all those things you know it's real because you're a dumb kid and you look at spell books and things like every kid does when they're growing up well the cool kids you do something you don't think much about it and it works but it has dire dire consequences so yeah I respect the place but I totally felt the place at the same time I didn't want to go in to be honest with you but I'm me and they knew me some of them so I had to live up to a few things I went in obviously or we wouldn't be talking about it it'd be a short story right now <laughs> I decided though that night To not share any of my experiences with these people. I didn't know them very well. And, you know, at the time, it's not something you share in polite conversation. You get some weird looks. Hell, you still get weird looks. But now at least the people are paying to see them. Back then, it wasn't like that. You know, 
you bring that stuff up and like I talk about now, people ain't going to believe you. And the thing about it, I had experienced all those things and then and now it makes me more, you know, or makes me less likely to believe your story. I don't want to be like that, but I'm skeptical by nature. Just because I've seen this stuff, it almost makes it harder for me to buy a story from someone unless I see that sincerity in their eyes. People that have experienced things, they can tell if you've experienced those same things. They know how it makes you feel. So we can tell when someone believes our story when we're telling them. Or when someone's being polite. Either way, it's fine with us. We don't even care if you don't believe it. We appreciate you being polite and listening. So that's what I was doing for these people. I was listening to their stories. I wasn't telling them mine. And you know what the funny thing about people is? They don't care. As long as you're listening to their story, you won't even have to tell yours. So the first investigation, that's all I'm really going to talk about here. And I'll brush on the other one. But that night, that first night, the Cock County Memorial Building. We went in, we made teams. There was probably too many of us. There was a team from Knoxville. There was a team from Upper East Tennessee. They were together. And nobody knew anybody. It's probably good for the investigation part of it. We were on our best behavior. I started in the attic. Had some knocks. Had some little things here and there. They could be anything, though. You don't know the building yet. Go to another room. I even went to the basement and nothing on that investigation happened to me bad in the basement. It didn't feel good. It didn't feel good at all. But nothing happened that I knew about. Now there was some audio captured. So there was some stuff happening in the basement. But I'll get to that in a minute. The part that I've been thinking about and the part that I remember vividly was when me and old Jim and another guy we'll call Robbie, he was the team leader. He probably owned the Magic Together and cards that everybody played with. It was that guy. Well, we were investigating the main gym because it was a gym. It was a basketball floor. And it's a big old gym. If anybody's seen the Ghost Brothers episode, you've seen the recreation there. It's where they put the bodies from the plane crash. Where they pieced them back together? Yes. Mm -hmm. Where they tried piecing them back together. Mm -hmm. In the middle of summer in a building that doesn't have air conditioning. From the mysterious circumstances surrounding that flight, again, we're not going to get deep into that, but we can tell you where you can. So I went into this gymnasium with only knowing little bits and pieces. I knew about the bodies. And I knew some past claims of the building, but nothing like what happened. So it was really quiet. We were pretty much the only ones on that whole floor. A lot of people were outside smoking. We waited for them to get back in so we could lock the building back down. And we did. So people are on other floors, some in the basement, some upstairs. We were on the main floor. And we started doing call and response in the gymnasium. So it got to me on the question asking. And anyone who's investigated with me over the years, I started getting a reputation I got a reputation of, hey, if you want something to happen to you, you need to go with John. Now, let me tell you something about John. If John could, he would make sure that wasn't the reputation and that wasn't happening because it's not as fun as it may sound. Not always. So I started asking, you know, the pleasantries. And way before Zach... I was probably asking him a little bit too harshly. And I'm not proud of that whatsoever. But I did ask, is there anybody here that would like to communicate with us? What's your name? 
How long have you been here? Can you give me some sign of your presence? I remember saying something good. Blow my socks off. (laughs) So about that time, I heard something insane. There was a wooden bingo ball machine in the front foyer of this building. One of the old school, little round wooden balls and an old school cage to spin them around. And about two or three feet in front of me on the floor, I started hearing one of those balls bouncing. Now, I didn't know it was one of those balls at the time. All I knew is I heard something bouncing, and it did the bounce. 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 Bounce, 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 bounce. It got faster as it got closer to the floor. And old Jim, well, he freaked out a little bit more than me. Did a little jump thing he liked to do. Turned his flashlight on. He, he carried one of those, you know, three foot long mag lights that you could kill a midget and, you know, pretty, <laughs> pretty quickly with. He turned it on. Gave me the big paranormal. Did you hear that? It's like, no, I didn't fucking hear it. I don't know. You're, you're insane. Of course I heard it. <laughs> So who did it? That's what I want to know. Who threw it? Do you throw it? Look over to the Kenny guy. Robbie, whatever we want to call him. That guy. Third guy. No. Get over here where I can see you. So he did. Jim says, I don't see anything. There's nothing on the floor. That's impossible. It's right in front of us, man. So then it happens again. Flashlight comes back on. We're looking around. Bounce. Bounce. Bounce, 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 bounce. Okay, real funny. Who's doing it? If it's a spirit doing it, I'm going to leave my light on. Do it now. Bounce. Bounce, 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 right in front of us. And I can't describe to you properly, but I will try how it feels to have something solid right in front of you and hearing something bounce off of it where your ears are telling your brain, hey, brain, it's right in front of us. Something solid's hitting something else solid, brain. Tell eyes to look at it. And your eyes are like, Oh, shit, brain. I don't see anything. (laughs) I don't know what ears is talking about, but there's nothing there. So when your eyes are fighting with your ears, your brain just gets pissed off at both of them. And it's just like WTF. And it it gives you a report. Boss, this ain't good. Something's wrong. I trust ears. I trust eyes. Something ain't going on right here. There's no explanation. So we ask again, and anybody who's ever done an investigation, man, if you get something to respond and do exactly what you ask, man, they're like, the ghosts are like cats, right? A cat could do something amazing, but hell, if you ask for it, it may take two hours before that son of a bitch does it. <laughs> if, he, if at all. If he ever does it. A cat can't be bothered. Right. Most ghost can't be bothered unless you have sweet talked them you've gave them catnip they're used to you they like to snuggle on you at night that kind of thing right Mm -hmm. just coming into a place cold it's real rare unless 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 they're unless they're pretty powerful Mm -hmm. so this thing was pretty powerful kept our lights on and it did it again and by now I'm freaking out like Jim we're bare. I mean, I'm surprised we weren't hugging each other in the middle of the floor, rocking back and forth. To be honest with you, I mean, it was early on. So there really weren't any like balls or not anything? yet. No. Are you just the sound. Just the sound. But you recognize the sound. You no, know no, says. no. I did not. Oh, no. you didn't recognize it no, at first. No, no. As I said a while ago, I didn't know yet. Ah, oh, I see. I see. 
Got to pay attention, Stacy. I'm paying attention. So, <laughs> I didn't know what it was yet. We went and got somebody to come and listen and experience with us because there was somebody else that was, I don't know, high up the magic gathering rank list. Right. So, this time it was a female, I do believe. She came in. She was standing there with us. We're trying to explain it. It's hard to explain a, a bouncy sound in front of you that was solid that really didn't happen, but right. happened. Right. And that's when I got pegged in the head. Out of nowhere. Just had to appear in front. I mean, maybe a foot above me. It didn't hit me hard. And it bounced off my head. Okay. And that time that one hit the floor. I got to see that one. Jim goes, that's a bingo ball. There's some of those in the front of the place. Okay. So it went through the cage, went through a couple of walls, and manifested on top of my head. That's awesome. <laughs> then he got hit with one. Only two of us got hit. They landed in other places throughout the place. I think there was about four or five. I tried making sense of the letters and numbers or whatever. I tried making sense of this stuff. There was no sense to be made. It was just the fact that this thing was pegging us with balls. Right, right. The the two aggressive members were being hit with the balls. Yes. Is that safe to say? It's safe to say. Or <laughs> or the ghost is like lightning and it was going toward the tallest trees. Possibly. No, I don't know. <laughs> All I know is it was terrifying. And I was thinking, well, that's nothing's going to top that. And I had everybody in there at that point. Whole group. And I was getting red, man. I was wanting it to happen again. Mm-hmm. That happens. So I was asking, come on, if you can hit me with that, do something. You trying to scare me? You can't scare me. <laughs> Oh, that sounds like some famous last words right there. And it was. <laughs> Do something. And about that time, the most god-awful, awe-inspiring, mother-loving slam of a door that should not be slammed. There's two big old doors, man, going into there. And when they slam... You hear it through the whole building. Reverberates through the entire building. And it slammed. First thing I wanted to know, is there somebody over there? Run over there, Jim. Go check. He's running over there. And the door on the other side of the place slammed. And we knew for a fact there was nobody down there, man. Mm -hmm. Nobody was down that ramp, man. We found out on cameras later there wasn't anybody around either one of them. And we were like, thank you. <laughs> All respectful like. <laughs> Do you want us to leave? <laughs> and then we hear another one, but this time it wasn't slamming closed. There was a third door down a hallway that's off to the side, a place that became important later on. And that one slammed open right where the stairs that go up to the attic are. And it slammed open so hard that the door got stuck in a stucco wall. That's how violent it was. When we left that night, we knew we had evidence. We knew we had stuff. And I'll never forget the hour and a half to drive back up to home. We didn't talk. Have you ever been through something like that? You've been through something traumatic with somebody. You've been through something where maybe you're going to be in trouble or maybe your life just got ripped out from under you and you don't have a reason to talk. You can ride for two hours or 20 hours. You're going to stare out the damn window trying to put pieces back together because your paradigm just got ripped open. Now, on another visit there, we caught great audio. We caught an EVP that said, I was fucking murdered. Mm -hmm. we put that on the ghost brothers episode because that was the third time i went a few years back ghost brothers season two cock county war memorial that episode mm -hmm. 
You can find it on season two. It's probably on Max now or on Discovery Go, whatever. It's streaming. It's one of the streaming ones. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's like season two, episode five, I believe, episode four. It's pretty easy to find Cot County. (laughs) But on that one, they use my whole story. It goes, it goes through the doctors, it goes through the, the narrative, it goes through all this stuff. And when I investigated with the brothers, we had stuff happen within five minutes. Disembodied voices in the in the basement. Things that, that basement likes to make you turn on each other. That happened with me and my best friend at the time. We almost fought because we each got touched thinking it was the other person. It wasn't. There was EVPs of a woman crying in that basement. EVP is something that sound like it's running up behind you. Oh, I hate that. There was there was stuff back, and this is back when you put voice on tape tape. Mm-hmm. It wasn't no digis. There was, but we didn't have them. Right. We got them soon after. But, yeah, I was thinking about that. And I was thinking about that feeling that you have. And I still get that feeling when we go to somewhere very ominous. Mm-hmm. You know, but this place is special to me. Well, yeah. I mean, you haven't had another investigation that's been that. Not that special. That special. I've had other ones that had arguably better stuff. Right. But I will argue that because it's hard to do better than manifestation. Oh, it's yeah. hard to do better. Hit with bingo ball. Physical manipulation. Mm-hmm. You know, the voices, the class A, the one class, the 2004 class A that stuck around for many, many years. Mm hmm. Was even I believe it was even used on the episode. Of course, they obviously didn't put that one piece in there. Right, right, right. The one word. Right. Place is legit, man. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. I don't know what caused it to be that way. I have my suspicions that it has to do with the things we said it does. But yeah, go watch the episode if you haven't seen it. I put a couple of funny quips from it in our book too. Yeah. But some of the less serious things. <laughs> but. So, yeah, that's what I was thinking of. I see. That's what happens when somebody posts a picture of that place. Yeah. It brings back all the memories. Yeah. it's uh, It really did this time. Mm-hmm. You know? So, it's uh, some good stuff. You know what else is good? What? We'll pull this back up. The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch. I love that show. hmm It's so good. It's amazing. hmm It's uh, I love it. And I love, um, especially when... Brandon Fugel's on there because mm-hmm. I, I, I listen. I've gave Elon tons of opportunities, right? Right. You know, my friend Elon. I'm gonna, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna bury Elon and I'm gonna become friends of Brandon. Brandon seems very cool. Yes. I'm gonna have to get a friend that has Skinwalker Ranch, dude. <laughs> you know, have your friend Fugel. Anybody who are you wanting to hashtag it? <laughs> it rolls off the tongue a little better than you know. My, my friend, friend Fugel. Yeah. I, listen, man, anybody, <laughs> anybody who spends money mm-hmm. to buy a place like that. Right, right. For the reasons he did. Right. They're cool in my book. Well, because you know you're not going to ranch on it. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess you're ranching if you have a ranch. <laughs> do you know what I like about that show is that the way that they do their investigating, like the things that they come up with is so things that we would do. Yeah. You know, like when they are faced with a problem and they're like, mm-hmm. why don't we just send up 9 million rockets? We would totally do that. I, I, I tell you, man, <laughs> I love it for many reasons. Cause I love yeah. Dr. Travis Taylor too. Right. And as we talked about mm-hmm. just when he's like, I stuck that rocket right up there. That damn thing blew up. <laughs> I got another rocket. It blew up too. <laughs> and rockets just don't blow up like that. But, you know, it just, it just comes off as so great. Um, I love that guy. But yeah, I mean, it's a great show just because of the evidence they're getting. Yes. It is amazing. If you haven't seen it, shame on you. You need to go out of your way to see it. And you can find all those episodes easily. Mm-hmm. Watch all the seasons, folks. And there's new ones on every week right now. So mm-hmm. it's good stuff. You need to check it out. And, uh, you know, it's right up there with uh, We Love Oak Island, too. 
We, yes. we we really do. And they find people that say, well, they never find it. I don't know what you're watching. Yeah, they find stuff all the time. They find such crazy stuff on there. Significant things. That I mean, they yes, they didn't find. find big crates of treasure, but they find, they're they finding yeah. archaeological finds, amazing ones. Yeah, they found a lot of really cool things. That, mm-hmm. that, that's a couple of shows you need to watch. I think uh, Ghost Adventures is starting a new season. They are. There's a lot of good TV on right now. I'll tell you what, Ghost Hunters, this, this season they've been in. Mm-hmm. been amazing the I really, ogs i really like that last episode we watched but we haven't seen the the newest one but we watched the one that was in tennessee from uh rosemont yes the rosemont house oh, that was in great Galaxy, tennessee it was so good and that thing they caught in front the full-bodied apparition of the house yes that was amazing yeah stacy miss i don't trust cameras she's like wait till i see jason walking yeah. front of it. <laughs> i was like it We've was seen- good but i want to see jason on camera well, and they finally showed it too the reason is with all the we review a lot of things mm-hmm we review a lot of things and a lot of times when you see stuff that's outdoors um if the camera's not that good when it gets to a certain length away right it it'll look like an apparition when it's a person walking yeah you get that a lot with cctv cameras yeah like people be, it'll look like a person and then as soon as they get so far away the camera just glitches them out and it looks weird but it's well, my not favorite really thing weird. is like on reddit or something like, did they disappear <laughs> yeah I'll be damned. They did. <laughs> Imagine that. Uh, um, yeah, but I was glad that they included that part. Like, at first, they didn't. At first, they were just showing the apparition. And I was like, Jason went over there. I yeah. just want to see him on camera. And finally, at the end of the episode, he was he was showing it to her. And he was like, you'll see me on the camera. And I was like, thank you. Yeah. You can see him on the camera. That girl, I tell you what, she said she was okay and it was all great. But I, <laughs> yeah. I don't think she's going to go back to work. <laughs> it was one of my favorite reveals ever. <laughs> Because uh, Jason and Steve are sitting there showing her all the stuff, and she's like, "Oh yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm really glad you guys came. Um, are you guys walking out right now? I, I need to leave. Uh, <laughs> Hang on, I'll lock up. Just yeah, wait for me. Yeah, just hold on one second, okay? <laughs> you know she's in her car, like quitting by text message. <laughs> Like so sorry, McDonald's called back. Uh, family issues. Yeah. I gotta I gotta go right now. Yeah. That's <laughs> but it's good stuff and that's the OGs, that's the gangsters of the ghost hunting. That's the yes. ones who taught everybody, no matter what people want to say. You know. <laughs> they they could have came out there with a plunger saying, If it smells, there's a ghost and people would have been out that first week, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> Do you smell it? I do smell it, Mildred. But I believe it's because it's a plunger, you know, but, but they would have done whatever. But right. it's good stuff. When, right. And we don't talk about TV enough, you know. We it's, don't. Um, that's some good stuff. And you know what? I said a couple of weeks ago mm-hmm. that I really believe in the UAP world. Right. The UFO world. Mm-hmm. That something big was getting ready to happen. Right. Right. And I still feel that. I feel it more, though, than I did. Right. I really do. I don't think it's... At the time of recording, we're waiting for the NASA announcement. We're waiting for the NASA press conference, which this will come out the same day as the NASA press conference. Right. So we couldn't wait for it. No. But Stacy's going to talk about it on, on her news. And uh, it's still cool that they're doing it. And we'll get to all the particulars and stuff. But I don't think that's going to have anything more than just, you know, it's still amazing. Hopefully it does. Right. Hopefully right. it just has something going, folks. Hey. We've been lying to y'all for about, you know, 50 years or so, <laughs> maybe 70 years. But uh, we just want to come clean now. <laughs> you know, we do have a Johnson Space Center and we blame it on that son of a bitch. <laughs> but OK, I can't wait for it. But while we're waiting, why don't we listen to uh, some really weird stuff that's been happening? We call that Stacy's Paranormal News. All right, let's get to the news. Let's. All right, so we may as well start with the NASA thing since you just mentioned it. Kinda since I buried let, the lead. Since you let the news out of the bag there. Yeah, all right. Um, okay, so NASA has announced that they're having their Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena Independent Study Team Public Meeting. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a very long Are title. they going to show us the aeroplane? <laughs> so it's on May 31st, which as time of this recording, that's tomorrow. It's 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time to 2.30, and then you can watch it. And then afterwards, they'll have like a press conference at like 3 p.m. Um, but they did, NASA themselves did uh, release like the agenda of what is going to be going on at the meeting. So basically, they're going to have the entire independent study team there. They're going to, um, according to the agenda, uh, they're going to do like a call to order and 
you know, have some overview remarks. You'll get to hear from uh, Sean Kirkpatrick mm. of the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office. He's going to make a presentation. There's going to be an FAA presentation uh, by Mr. Mike Free. Free. I don't know how you say his last name. It's very strange. Um, <laughs> That's a long last name. Free. Free. <laughs> free. Free. I don't know how to say his last name. It's very strange. Is that I, Dutch? I think so. He could never spell it when he was a kid. His papers were just... Yeah, okay. All right. Got you. Uh, So they're going to do just a bunch of like presentations in the morning. They'll break for lunch. And then after lunch, there will be the um, independent study team panelist presentations and discussions. And the way they're titled, it doesn't sound too super exciting. I'm sure it'll cover everything everybody wants to hear about. If they give something really good, it's going to be at the most boring part of the day when they're expecting the least people. Right, right. So they're going to, somebody's going to do framing the issue of the UAPs. They're going to do data and crowdsourcing, relevant observations beyond Earth's atmosphere. They're going to talk about the challenges. This next part is called calculus and you. Yeah. So um, basically, aliens are real. It doesn't say that they're going to actually talk about any specific reports or anything like that. So I don't but, know what good's going to come out of it. But the fact that they're doing it is... Getting your little Tommy Wommy machine. Mm-hmm. I want you to go back right now to about 2010. Right. And imagine NASA doing this. Mm-hmm. That's true. It's pretty cool, huh? It is pretty cool. They're actually doing it. So we're getting somewhere. Mm-hmm. So I'll probably... Um, Follow hashtag UFO Twitter because they'll have every bit of it. Yeah, take a look at it. Um, I may watch the media teleconference at three, you know, just kind of get the wrap up of the whole thing. And then next time we do a show, we'll we'll talk about anything relevant. Well, it works like this, folks. That popped up. If there's something amazing on it, you're going to have a show a day later. <laughs> That's right. We might be doing a special show. If you ever see us pop one out the next day, right? you might want to listen to it. Because there's something happening. <laughs> the, they use that the acronym for the independent study team. You know, it's UAPIST. So it looks like U- UAPIST. UAPIST. Whoa. U- UAPIST. Whoa. <laughs> Not without proof. It's I never got worst, near that alien. It's the worst acronym I've ever seen. I know they had to use it because of the title, but it's terrible. We're sorry, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> we know that UAPIST. <laughs> oh, all right. So... Further information coming on that, I suppose. Um, So while we're talking about UFOs, let's talk about a conference that just happened recently, the SALT Eye Connections uh, Conference in New York. It was from May 16th to 18th. And one of the presenters at this particular conference uh, was Gary Nolan, who is a professor uh, at the Department of Pathology at Stanford University School of Medicine. Now, when he was doing his little presentation, and this particular conference is, it's sort of just a, has investors and entrepreneurs, like thousands of speakers. They just talk all Pathological day Pathological people. All different. I mean, in entrepreneurs, investors, uh, mostly relating to finance and economics. I'm not really sure how this topic came up, but uh, his session was titled The Pentagon, Extraterrestrial Intelligence, and Crashed UFOs. Yes. And that's what he was talking about. And some of the comments that he made, the reason it sparked an uh, article was that he claimed that um, aliens have not only visited Earth, but that they have been here for decades and continue to be here. And that is his belief. And he stands like 100% firm on that. He claims he is 100% sure that that is the case. Now, Gary Nolan, you may have heard his name before. I know back in 2018, we talked about him because he published a paper disproving the uh, that Atacama humanoid skeleton. Do you remember that? Yep. People were saying it was like an alien skeleton. And he yeah. was like, no, I can either prove or disprove that. Yeah. And he did a whole paper on it, you know, disproving that it was really not... The real right. thing. And once he did that, you know, he sort of got into this whole UAP situation. He's been asked to do a lot of different things, um, analyze material. But the one thing he was asked to do was not say that they're 100% real. <laughs> right. I right. mean, because that's the headline. That's true. 100%. <laughs> That is, yeah, it is what he said. Yeah. Um, now, there is a piece that I thought was really interesting with him that Vice did in 2021, where he was talking about how he got into the UAP thing, and he was he did blood tests on pilots and people that had come into contact with UAPs. Like, they the government asked him to do tests right. on these individuals that supposedly came into contact or were near 
unidentified aerial phenomena, you know, pilots and things like See that. See if there was any similarities. Right. And some of the things in the interview on Vice, it, you can read it. It's really long. But some of the things that he said, like they, he looked at roughly about 100 or so patients and claiming that a lot of the symptoms that they found, they did MRI scans on him. He did blood tests on him and things like that, that they found symptoms similar to what we now consider the Havana syndrome. Mm. Now, it's not the same thing, but it is like... How interesting. Yeah, it is. It does have like these and for people different places in their brain. Don't play along at home. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've covered it in depth, and we even have a show that's uh, titled something around it. Mm-hmm. But there was some very strange things that happened to some uh, officials throughout the world in different places. It started in Havana, so it's got that name, but it right. happened in other places as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, what all did it do to him? Do you remember? It was like some really strange yeah, things. They had like, to leave. Like and... it changed the physiology of their brain. Yeah. Um, now, he does claim that the people, like eventually the, some of the Havana Syndrome people got separated from the people that he was, the UAP people. Like it, it's not exactly the same thing. That was just what he could relate it to. But he talked about um, one thing I thought was really interesting was that there's something different about the all these people that he tested, like there's a part of their brain that was denser than normal. And this would be the part that you would consider uh, would be intuition. Um, And of course, he was looking at a lot of pilots. So you're talking about pilots that make split second decisions. And of course, they're going to have, they call it a brain inside a brain. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like on a normal person, if it was one times, these people would be five times, 10 times, 15 times. Like, so it's an anomaly that you don't see. And in this group of people, that they were testing, it was actually common, which was unusual. Um, and so I, I would pass that test. They're called highly functioning people. Yes. You know, and of course you'd have to be highly functioning to have one of these jobs in the first place. Um, but I just thought it was so interesting. He said that one of the people that he tested in this series of tests was from Skinwalker Ranch. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I'll tell you who's going to be watching that NASA thing tomorrow is going to be the guys from Skinwalker after Travis had to let him know that he was working for the, you know, doing the Pentagon thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he's like, I'm never going to do that again. (laughs) He'll be like tomorrow. be like, guys, I don't know why we have to watch this whole thing. Right. I'm right here. Right. (laughs) I swear I'm not part of the NASA one. (laughs) Just making sure Travis... uh Um, they, he did say that the guy from Skinwalker Ranch, that he didn't think that, that was a UAP thing, but it was electromagnetic. Like yeah. maybe it was a, somebody was trying to, you know. Use just, deadly ray guns. Right. On the people that were investigating yeah. there, that sort of thing. So I don't know. It was very interesting. Some of the people they had MRIs from before he did his tests and they had all these issues before they came into contact with the UAP. So they could prove that it wasn't because of the well, UAP. Well, unless they didn't know about being in contact with UAPs. True. Previously. True. But that does bring up the question, do you, did they attract UAPs to them because they had this higher cognitive function? Chicken or the egg craft. I mean, that egg could craft. be... Yeah, I mean, aliens would be able to tell that sort of thing, you would think, right? Well, I would say so. Yeah. They can probably... They probably have a uh, like an infrared that mm-hmm. just shows you those kind of people. Right. It's like the people that they... I mean, it might be like any type of blood, right? Mm-hmm. There's certain bloods that go together and certain ones that don't. Mm-hmm. So maybe only ones, there are certain ones they can use for what they need. True. And, True. you know, so I don't know how the blood type thing worked out, but I wonder if your type was on there like normal, the type, oh. type O negative or whatever. I have no idea. But I don't know. It's a really interesting article and you should go read it. And just the fact that he made those comments, like he is 100% convinced. Yeah. That. Well, you know, the funny thing is you go back mm-hmm. to like the work of um, like John Mack or any of these high fluting positions in big mm-hmm. universities, most of the time when people get into the phenomenon, you even go like the project blue book mm-hmm. and you know, people didn't want to believe in it mm-hmm. and they always end up that way. Right. Right. They end up being proponents of it or you got the astronauts that go up and then they come back mm-hmm. and they're like, well, you know, I can't talk about any of that, but I believe in aliens. Right, right. So it's very funny to me how usually highly intelligent people that look into it. Eventually get their ideas changed. They do. Normally when that happens, when Mm -hmm. a highly intelligent person researches something they don't believe is real, they find out that they're correct. Right. You know, so. Um, The the interviewer asked him how Stanford felt about him doing all this stuff. And he said that they were very supportive. And even when he did the, had all the press and the stuff from the alien 
the Atacama Desert Alien, that they, you know, helped him deal with that and they backed him up. So, I mean, that's kind of cool to know that your big university is going to stand behind you no matter what you say. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that's good. It's uh, it's very strange, though. I mean, I it don't is. think there's any question right. at this point, right? There's right. there's too many things out there that, that are unexplainable. Mm-hmm. And our own government is saying, you know, oh, we can't explain that. We're not going to call it what it is, but we can, right. you know. Well, have you heard about this new thing they're doing now where they've, they're have they doing a tabletop exercise? You know how they do the tabletop exercises for like asteroids and what would we do if we only had seven days? Uh, absolutely. Like, well, they're doing one now where you have to, they're asking everyone around the world, public and everybody, to decode and interpret an alien message. Oh. So they... Has, seen that. It's like an art insta- thing. Like a woman came up with this message and they beamed it to Earth from a ship or something mm-hmm. going around Mars. So that it was like a real message coming in. Um, you can download the message online. There's a Discord server you can join to kind of follow along. And they are they're asking everybody to just look at it and do what they could do. Any specialist, layperson, anybody can submit their ideas on how they decoded this message. And uh, I just think that's really interesting. Like they, they say, they claim, they just want to see how people would work together, how it would work. It's called last starfighter. If they got, well, that's what I, that was my thought. I was like, do you think that they're last starfighting this? Like they're going to wait and see who's going to, they're pulling a last starfighter. Who's going to post like the correct answer and then like visit them in the night in a dark car and be like, we need you. Someday that'll be (laughs) in uh, the dictionary or encyclopedia or something. Last Mm -hmm. starfightering. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> that was my thought, too. I don't know if anybody else thought that, but um, I did go on the Discord server just to see what kind of people were on there. And, you know, I can't even read half of what's on there. Like, a lot of it's in a different language because there's people all over the world. But there are scientists, there are engineers, there are such high-level sciencey people saying things on there that I don't understand. It's just, it's amazing. Um, I have not downloaded the message to see what it sounds like or what it is, um, but they're supposedly offer you the software. They offer you, you know, the message and they're asking everybody to submit their scientific data, thoughts, sketches, drawings, ideas for the technical decoding and cultural interpretation of the message. And they do have a website. There's a project website. It's called A Sign in Space. And you can go to the website. They're going to post things there to see uh, who can eventually decipher the extraterrestrial signal and be recruited by, you know, NASA, whoever. (laughs) Well, I'm going to have to do it. Are you? Mm. Okay. Well, I'll download it and we'll take a look at it and see what you think. Yeah. You'll just be like, I don't understand. They're just talking. I'll get it right. And they'll, uh, then they'll let us know they were actually monitoring Wordle. (laughs) Is that what it was? (laughs) I'm good at Wordle. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'm really good at that. All right. So let's move on to, oh, let's talk about the story about the nun in Missouri. The nun in Missouri. Yes. There is um, an abbey out there. It's called uh, the Benedictines of Mary, Queen of Apostles Abbey. And (laughs) (laughs) they are... The nuns there were preparing for an addition of a St. Joseph's shrine. So that involved the reinterment of the remains of our beloved foundress, Sister Wilhelmina. That was what their statement said. So they had to dig up Sister Wilhelmina, who's been dead for four years, Dear and God. reinter her somewhere else. So when they dug up, they exhumed her. Um, her name is Sister Wilhelmina Lancaster. They exhumed her and they were told to expect just some bones since she had been buried in just a simple wooden coffin, no embalming, been down there for four years. But instead, they discovered an intact body and a perfectly preserved religious habit. Oh so my God. she is completely uh, not decayed. I think they call it, what do they call it when it's like that? Scary. Um, <laughs> incorruptible she's incorruptible um now it says that they did not mean to publicize the discovery but someone unnamed posted a private email publicly and then the news began to spread so now this little tiny town of like 1800 people um i mean 1800 people have come to the town it's this little tiny town but the like 1800 people have like descended on before the the story hit it big 
So it's going to get crazy. I actually said it right the first time. The town only has 1,800 people. It is small. Yeah. And there's been people there just coming to see Lancaster's body. At first, they were letting people come through and touch her and things like that. Yeah. But um, I think they've said that they've got to put her under glass because in the event that they start, um, the Catholic Church starts you know, test and an investigation on the incorruptibility because, you know, that's how you become a saint. Yes. Um, then they need the body to be right not affected by people touching it. Yeah. Um, now... And I'm sure she'll appreciate that, actually. Yeah, probably, I'm sure. Now, the problem, they have not started the investigation. And the reason is, is because normally you have to go five years before you can start that investigation. It has to be incorruptible for five years. Oh, come on. And it's been four years. And even some people, like an anthropology instructor at Western Carolina University in North Carolina, said that it's probably not as rare as people are expecting that... Uh, it's common because of the clothes and different things that she was wearing that it it's not that uncommon that after four years, she's perfectly I need to preserved. wear a habit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but I mean, if they start that, I mean, if five years is the cutoff for the church, then I mean, I think four years is pretty impressive I do too. to not have any decay at all. Yeah. You know, no, I, I mean, I think that's really impressive. That's not how it works. Yeah. I can't keep strawberries in my refrigerator for a week and this yeah. woman's been buried for four years and she's perfectly preserved <laughs> right so you know i think it's pretty amazing and people are still you know coming they still want people to be able to see her body and you know get their miracle or whatever and and people are doing that funny how places in the world are different right. you could dig that up in some places and they would have her face down with uh, <laughs> a couple of spikes with a scythe over her yeah. neck in case she got up yeah, <laughs> yeah <I know. laughs> some of those villages we talk about well, she was a nun, I guess, so... Right. Right. I've right. seen the movie. So I suppose um, they're going to keep her under glass. I don't know what the plan is. I don't know if they're just going to keep her under glass now for another year and see if she Wakes starts up. to rot. Yeah. <laughs> and if not, then maybe they'll start the investigation. I, I feel like they should just go ahead. They should give it to her four years, you know. I'll tell you enough. what. This is going to be it. Mm -hmm. This is the dead walking right now. Is it? Is that it's what it is? It's going to start with her. <laughs> Sister Wilhelmina... Lancaster at the Benedictines of Mary. Okay. Well, I mean, it's, it here. at least she's got a cool name, right? That's true. That's true. Um, but there's, there we're pictures. pulling for you, Wilhelmina. <laughs> there's pictures online and, and it's amazing how well she looks like considering. Yeah. I've seen him like that uh, after a long time and mm -hmm. it's, it's really strange. Yeah, it is. It means something. Um, so let's go on to a Bigfoot story. Oh, okay. that's a big change. Yeah. So this isn't really a recent story, but it has come out recently. So I just wanted to mention it because um, I don't really know why it's popped up again. But it's talking about the FBI's secret Bigfoot investigation. And this is one that they did. Now, this goes way back to 1976. Right. And we're talking about Peter Byrne. And <laughs> Peter Byrne Poor guy. sent a mysterious <gasps> tissue sample. That is a terrible name. I, yeah, especially for someone who sends mysterious tissue samples. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> I was very excited. And if you ever, if you ever started a fire with two twigs, and you just got a, you know, just got a right, and it just it it, it well it worked. <laughs> um, I should have known when I smelled the smoke. <laughs> So he sent a mysterious tissue sample. It's when Kim Kardashian put that picture of her ass out. <laughs> and they just put it all over everything. My wife don't let me look at porn, don't you know? And holy God, <sighs> I seen that big old voluptuous circle. And I couldn't help myself. I had to start a fire the old fashioned way. <laughs> Okay. Sorry. It's okay. He's <laughs> I'm done with Peter Byrne. <laughs> he sent the mysterious sample to the FBI, asking them to analyze it and determine its origin. He claimed that it came from a Bigfoot creature. So now the, it says the FBI usually only examines evidence related to crimes, but this time they made an exception because I guess they were curious, supposedly curious. And so they tested the sample and they claimed that it was from the deer family, that it was something from a deer. However, they didn't disclose their findings to the public and kept the information classified for over 40 years. No idea why. Maybe it was Bigfoot deer. So they finally... That's horrifying. <laughs> Be awful, wouldn't it? Just... Big hoof. It's the big hoof. Uh... Don't scare it. For the love of Christ. Last time it Put flipped that, it, it flipped over four pickups in a van. Put that deer scent away. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> um, so finally, 
<laughs> That's a terrible noise. So finally, in 2019, they finally released 22 documents from their records archive revealing their Bigfoot research. And it showed that they had received several requests from Byrne and other Bigfoot enthusiasts over the years, but they had always declined to get involved. And the only exception was that one tissue sample in 1976. Um, So that's all there was to it. There wasn't anything that they released. No idea why they kept it classified for so long. It doesn't make any sense at all, um, unless it took them 40 years to change their Bigfoot stuff into deer stuff, you know, whatever. I would like to see the Mount St. Helens files. I would too. Do you think you can FOIA request that? I don't know. You you hear all the things about the fact that they, you know, we should try. Yeah. I mean, there has to be something on it. It's, you would think so. I want to see about all the all the bodies that carried out and ever so many eyewitnesses, you know, know, that talk about it. Mm-hmm. And it's pretty interesting. Um, this article did mention that um, Dr. Jane Goodall, who, you know, was the primatologist that yeah. lived with the monkeys, um, she expressed an openness to the idea of Bigfoot. And she said that she's heard stories from indigenous hunters in remote areas. And, you know, she was in those very remote areas. Right. Um, where she had, where she studied her primates, describing walking monkeys without tails that are taller than humans. That was the stories that the indigenous hunters told her. Wow. So, you know, she said, that she's completely open to the fact that there could be a creature like that out there. So, well, yeah, I mean, look how long it took them to find gorillas. <laughs> that's I mean, that true. was just a rumor. There's another one too. What was it? Oh, the giant squid. Yeah. I mean, that's even just been a recent thing. Like yeah. it was just a rumor and, you know, a legend or whatever. Oh, that doesn't really exist. And then boom, they found it. Yeah. I mean, so. that's the, it's, there's so much out there that we don't know about yet. I know. And especially in the sea like that. I it's, know. Places we can't get to. I mean, mm-hmm. so I, I totally, like we said before, when we lived in Maine, we that's when we started believing. All right. It's <laughs> this, real. This could happen. Damn canopy's crazy. <laughs> All right. So let's move on to a discovery. Um, scientists may be able to put Mars-bound astronauts into a suspended animation How? using sound waves. Oh. Based on a study that they did on Are they going to do play Adele? <laughs> yes. I mean, <laughs> They put little headphones on these yeah. mice and they played Adele and the mice just come yeah. out. Uh, so, There's going to be an Adele fan get a hold of us. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> so supposedly firing ultrasound signals into rodent brains puts them in a torpor-like state. And now they're wondering if it could be used on humans. Do scientists ever do anything where they don't look at it and go, hey, I wonder if I can do that to people? I don't That'd know. be fun. Let's do that. <laughs> I just wonder if they ever do anything that they don't terrorize the poor rats. <laughs> they, had to, they made them these little helmets and glued them on the, <laughs> the rats. <laughs> it really says that in here. Like they had to, I don't see it right in a second, but I read it and it said that they had to glue the little helmets <laughs> on the mouse's head so that it could fire the ultrasonic. <laughs> ultrasound things into their brain and it shocked it to death like <laughs> well he's asleep do you think if you fired anything loud enough that it might make that mice fall asleep probably they said that it um they sent the ultrasound into the region of the brain responsible for controlling metabolism and body temperature and it reduced their average body temperature slowed their heart rates and reduced their oxygen consumption now they only did it for like 24 hours at you know, at a time. So, you know, they're really far off from putting humans in a torpor-like state so that they can get to Mars. You know, they're trying it in China somewhere. It's like a big jump. Um, (laughs) But, oh yeah, it says here they created a wearable ultrasound hat that they initially glued onto the heads of mice. (laughs) <laughs> my God. <laughs> Those poor little things. Uh, so after being exposed to it, they immediately entered a torpor-like state, and then it took them about 90 minutes to come out of it after the 24 hours. So I don't know who's going to be the guinea pig for that study, but wow. Probably a guinea pig. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's possible. Supposedly you can. I mean, they're thinking about using it also for people that are ill. Maybe yeah. to prolong, prolong their, their pain. Yeah. To prolong, their, prolong their agony until they don't find a cure for whatever's yeah. wrong with them. We want to make so. the family feel better and to keep them around a little bit longer. <laughs> until everybody else dies. Yeah. And we can let them go. All right. So let's move on to some other discoveries. And this one's from Sweden. Yeah. Uh, this discovery of some 2,700-year-old petroglyphs depicting people, ships, and animals discovered in in Sweden. Ah. Now, the petroglyphs were carved on a granite rock face that was once part of an island. It's oh. not part of an island anymore. At the time, it was part of an island, meaning that people would have had to make the carvings while standing like on a boat 
or from a platform. Um, you can't climb up into the air. It's like too sheer to climb up there. So somebody had to stand there and like carve all these petroglyphs in there. Um, and they're really cool looking. Like they've banged on the rock with another rock. So that the white, yeah. like it's granite. So the white showed up. It's really easy to see. Um, but the they include depictions of ships, people, and animal figures. What is the place now if it's not an island? Um, I think is it it's underwater? just no. I think it's just land now. Oh, okay. I think it used to be an island, and okay. now it's not. Um, now they were looking for some new petroglyphs in the area, and they came across this moss covered covered rock face, and they noticed some lines on it that appeared to be human made. So when they removed the moss, they happened to reveal all of these petroglyphs. So they're really excited about it. And it says the biggest one shows a ship that is 13 feet long. Mm. So most of them are about 12 and 16 inches, but they're really cool. There's some, they say there's some four-legged creatures that may be horses. I guess they can't really tell, (laughs) but they're not really sure what the purpose of them were. If it was either showing ownership or maybe it was like a sign saying what's here or the, the ships are cool though. You can tell it looks like a long ship, a really long, like Viking long ship kind of thing. It was way before Vikings. Yeah. But that's what it looked like. Yeah. So. I mean, it's the right area for them, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's well before them yes. as far as, you know, organizational I think it's pillaging. amazing that we still find things like that in areas where, you know, they're already doing work and then yeah. all of a sudden, bam, something brand new we've never seen before. All over the place, man. It's just amazing. It's just all over the place. Yeah. It's, it's hard to believe what's under our feet or... Right, right. All you gotta do is dig. So having found that nice little carving petroglyph there in Sweden, let's move on to Spain where we found some Roman carvings. Oh, of course. This is going to be great. I can already (laughs) tell if it's Roman, it's going to have to do with wine or penises. (laughs) So uh, some heavy rains, a rainstorm exposed... Uh, the ancient Roman stone carvings of a phallus. There you go. A face and a cornucopia. Well, of course. And this is at a first century It's like fort in stages of the day. In Spain. Now, they don't exactly know what these carvings mean because part of the rock is gone. Like, it's just this one part of these carvings. Um, it says they're unique because there's no known reference of similar engravings. The part that's nearby. missing is the guy's old lady that he put over top the phallus. <laughs> Well, they're really strange because it's like there's a face that's facing, like looking straight out, eyes straight on you. Like they they say it's very intense. Yeah. Um, and then you have on one side of the head there's a phallus, and on one side there's a cornucopia. Like there's no way who who knows what that. Catrinicus was such a horicus. <laughs> well, you know, Romans they they liked carving penises. Like it was it meant. Good luck and like Dude. strength and victory. It was like a, a I hate very to let you know this. positive symbol. But Sumerians liked penises. Mm-hmm. Greek, they like penises. Right. Hidden Atlanteans <laughs> like penises. <laughs> if we found Atlantis right now, everybody would be all excited. First thing they'd find would be like a golden right. giant penis. <laughs> they probably rode around on like brass penises through the sky. It's just a thing with guys. Probably, probably. You would think it would be girls, right? Yeah, but no. No, it's guys that enjoy drawing penises. (laughs) Um, I believe that the person they talked to in this article claimed that the the phallus's function would have been to ward off evil from the site and the people associated with it. That's one function. So it wards off. Apparently your penis wards off evil. You need to be shaking that thing around a little more. I must be shaking it backwards (laughs) because I've never warded off evil with it. Um, I've sure as hell found some. (laughs) It says that the face's two eyes are looking forward toward the viewer, which was likely an intentional perspective. Uh, given by the cracker. It's a shame the phallus didn't have two eyes. Uh, you know, normally they do like a side profile in yeah. carvings, and this was not. This was done to be to assert dominance and directness. Directness is Again, what they claim. Phallus normally takes control of that. Yes. Yeah, so now you got this very intense face with a penis. Yeah. Beside it. So um, I'm curious what was on the rest of like. There had to be more to the carving. I don't know. They're they're trying to figure out what it means. And I'd say there was probably boobs somewhere. Probably the see the other half of <laughs> my thought. My thought is because this place that they found it was a small fort. It would have served as a watchtower overlooking the waters near with this lonely area guards in Spain. Right, so they're just bored. Yeah, they're doodling is what yeah. they're doing. They're yeah. like, oh, let's just do a penis. That's fun. They're oh, like, oh, face. <laughs> wait here. He's on his way back. Get rid of the boobs. We'll keep the penis. <laughs> I we can't, can explain the penis. I can't believe what thou hast done. 
<laughs> we'll let the moss grow. To facing the fort like this. <laughs> so there you are. They are going to make it. Uh, it has been made public where people can come by and look at it and, you know, give their thoughts, I guess. Whatever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Let's do one more I wanted to story. make an art exhibit before I die. Uh-huh. Dicks through the ages. <laughs> you don't think somebody's already done that? No. No, no. Okay. Because I want to go back to the earliest, like, you know, mm -hmm. maybe I'll do like titties and, you know, Todd's. I don't know. I'll give them a- <laughs> You'll give it some kind of fancy flowery name. Yeah, some flowery name and just have like, <laughs> you know, pictures of the other sex throughout the ages. Oh, all right. So let's do this last story. This story from New Zealand. This is about a pizzeria- that is offering to delay payments until after customers die. Oh, wow. So this is a place called Hell Pizza. Oh, God. And they're, they have announced their new promotion called Afterlife Pay. And it's based on, you know, like all those places where you can do your payments after, you know, an after pay situation, pay in four, that kind yeah. of thing. So it, that's how it was inspired, like a buy now, pay later scheme. And they've claimed that 666 customers in New Zealand um, and 666 customers in Australia um, will be chosen for the Afterlife Pay program. You just go to their website and you enter saying you would like to do the program. And whoever they pick, these people they pick, they'll delay payments for pizza until the customer has passed away. Um, it says those chosen will be invited to sign a real amendment to their wills, allowing the cost of their pizza to be collected upon death. Oh no God. interest or fees will apply, and the agreement is legally binding. Oh, my God. So you can eat pizza your whole life. Shut up. <laughs> it's it's a damn crossroad demon. In 2023, <laughs> the damned old demon has figured it out. No more fiddle playing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No more sitting at a crossroad because they're hard as hell to find now without like cameras. Right, right, right. So any self-respected crossroad demon can't just pop up anymore without the damn cameras. Right, right. So now what they've done is put it right out in the open. They started a New Zealand. And they're even chain. telling you because God will strike you dead. <laughs> He'll be like, look, a demon, you'll have to put your filthy demon. You'll have to put 666 in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and people won't be so stupid. Yes, but I'll have them sign their souls for pizza. <laughs> I would read that amendment to your will very carefully. But how many people are going to read it? No, nobody is. They're going to be like, I get free pizza. And How often gonna... do you sign up for something online and you just scroll <laughs> to the bottom to hit I agree? Exactly. Um, so it is a New Zealand-based oh pizza God. chain. It's called Hell Pizza. I looked at their menu. It's, you know, aptly themed. Mm -hmm. The names of all the pizzas. Oh, and I'm sure are it is. Very. That's because they're all related. working in the pizzeria. <laughs> it's it's been open for quite some time. It's an interesting little promotion. Hope you enjoy the Balthazar. I don't cannoli. Know, I don't know how they're gonna. I mean, it's gonna be a long time before they profit from this. That's a lot of people. It's gonna get free pizza. I'd eat pizza every single day. I'm sure you would. That'd get you a lower level of hell. <laughs> Well, I mean, just as long as I sign my will for all the wonderful things I own, they could take that pizza payment right out of that. You'd be at the pearly gates, and they'll be like, well, you lived a pretty good life. You really loved animals. That's a good thing. You put up with John. Oh, oh. <laughs> so you partook in that pizza, huh? Oh, we got the signed addendum here. So, oh, no, so hell pizza didn't make you think of anything, of a free anything in this day and time. <laughs> 666. Okay. We, well, we're going to pull this lever now. You know, I mean, <laughs> just beware, people. Somebody read the fine print and let uh, me know. Yeah, yeah I'm curious. We've wanna... got listeners down there. I want to know. Yes. Yeah, because it's New Zealand and Australia. So somebody, somebody that wins this. Well, think about it. It's down under. <laughs> they're telling you in every way they possibly can. <laughs> right, right. I mean, they're being very blatant about it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only place you can probably get away with it. I'm sure. Send a bunch of damn prisoners down there. See what happens? <laughs> they turn to the devil. Oh. Oh. All right. So that's all my news. Well, that's that's good. That's that's a way to fire me up at the end. <laughs> no pun intended. All right, folks. Well, hopefully NASA tells us something cool, and we'll have some good stories for you again next week. For my lovely wife, Stacy. my name's John. So long from the Sideshow. Good night.